In this video, we're going to take a look at the 1100 watt portable power station from Opus. Opus is a Chinese company that's making a move into the American market and now has warehouses in New York and California to support sales on their website and via Amazon. These portable power stations have become hugely popular ways to transport energy that's ready to use for camping, overlanding, boondocking, emergencies, or just off-grid living in general. But I've tested over a dozen of these devices now, and they vary in quality and performance. So without further ado, let's see how the Opus measures up. While you watch the unboxing montage, let's talk about its size. 1100 watts of continuous output power is pretty impressive. That makes this one of the bigger models that's available on the market. Keep in mind, that also makes it bigger and heavier than other choices. So if you're looking for something ultra portable, for hiking, or in a small form factor to stow easily in a cubby hole in your RV, this probably isn't it. It weighs 25 pounds and is about 13 inches by 8.5 inches by 11.5 inches. But if you need a lot of power and can handle the size, this might be your best bet. Included in the box is a user manual, an AC wall charger, and a DC charging cable. As far as user manuals go, this one's pretty decent, with understandable English and some proper support and warranty information if you get stuck. It also claims a cycle life of over 3600 cycles, which is most likely rated at 80% depth of discharge, but still very impressive, and much longer than some competitors that use lithium ion cells instead and only last 500 or so cycles. This power station has the basic features that most anyone's looking for. It has three AC outlets, which is more than almost all competitor units, a cigarette lighter output for 12 volt accessories, two other DC 12 volt outputs, two regular USB outputs, two USB-C outputs, and an LED light function. It can be recharged three different ways, from a wall outlet in your home, from a solar panel, or from a car cigarette lighter 12 volt DC connection. Anyways, enough talk. Let's do some testing. First things first, we have to charge the power station up to full. Unfortunately, due to the weather right now, I can't test the solar charging capabilities. It's the middle of winter, so there isn't eight sun hours in the day right now, so it would take multiple days, and the sun isn't always out very long. So that doesn't lend itself to proper testing. It is what it is. After a few hours, the power station was full and ready for its first test. Here is my test rig. For those of you who haven't seen this before, I have four light sockets that I can use to load up a power station. So let's start with two 250 watt heat lamps for the first test. I have a power meter connected that will keep track of how much power is used on the test. But I can also look at the LCD screen and keep track of how much time it takes for the power station to go from 100% to 0%. As you could see, there's about a 20 watt difference in what the Opus claimed as the output and what the power meter read. But even using the more generous numbers from the power meter, the power station only produced 760 watt hours on a relatively low load test. It's rated for 992 watt hours, and even if you use their 88% efficiency of the inverter, it should still be good for 873 watt hours. Well maybe that was a fluke, so let's charge it back up and do another test. With the power station fully charged again, let's take it back to the test rig and push it a little harder this time. After resetting the counter on the power meter, I turned on all four of the heat lamps. I know they're supposed to be an even thousand watts, but for some reason they don't draw that much when connected to these power stations.
This time, the power meter showed that only 700 watt hours of power had been consumed. A lower number does make sense with a higher load, but it backs up the results from the first test. This power station's capacity is not properly rated. I reached out to Opus for comment and they assured me that this would be fixed in a new release of the power station coming soon. So kudos to them for taking responsibility and we'll definitely revisit this model in the future once they make some fixes. Now I know that most of you are turned off by this and are thinking that you want to pass on this power station. Well, this might change your mind. I assume that they want to get rid of the old models because right now you can get one for only $700 with a built-in $300 coupon on Amazon. That's so much cheaper than competitor models, it's ridiculous. So you may want to wait for the better performing model, or you might want to think about picking up one of these right now for pennies on the dollar. I'll leave that up to you. Thanks for watching this review video. Be sure to check back for a follow-up video on this power station sometime in the future.